Let's go, let's go. This is the collection of all the hardest bowlers I've ever done. And we're gonna start in Stockholm, Sweden. This is the first collab I ever did with Eric Carlson Boltring. And this 8B is the only 8B I've ever done inside. Best part, but also to get more distance between your arms and then it's easier to move up the foot. And then I'm just gonna shoot out for the Gaston. And then coming in and mashing that seems pretty hard. So this bowler fell pretty much like a one move bowler. And to begin with I tried to go with a lot of speed, but then I decided to try to go slower instead. Even though this is the only 8B bowler I've done inside, I don't know if it's the hardest one. That might come later. So I'm gonna show you both inside and outside bowlers. Some of these bowlers that I'm gonna show you are not the hardest grade-wise, but some of the bowlers that took me the longest to complete. First time I tried this bowler was with Epic TV, and then a year later I came back, and it's probably the 7C Plus that's taken me the longest to complete outside. business. It's like that, you have to control that barn door. Come on. This is uh, den som frikter ulven, the one who fears the wall for something in English. And uh, this was on the same day as the other uh, previous bowler. The landing was really scary and on these types of bowlers I feel like you need a couple of attempts just to get used to the, the fall before you're uh, brave enough to try to really commit. So if you don't commit for that move you might actually fall further. If you commit you're just gonna land on that stone but if you don't commit you might end up falling all the way down to the first crash pad. Come on. small touch on the crash pad. Kind of looked like I was touching a little bit. No, I guess that was okay. This next one is the first one that actually uh, I earned some money on. Uh, this was a bounty bowler, so they put up a hundred bucks for whoever could complete this. And this bowler was just randomly at the gym and I decided to try it after doing all the grip stuff for Tom and Juji's video. I fell on the first move a couple of times and I thought that it would be impossible to complete it. And uh, the quality here is pretty bad. This was back when I used my little, tiny little camera. That's insane. Ooh. Yeah, come on. Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Come on. Ooh. Is it 
Yeah. Was that the closest anyone's ever gotten? That was definitely the closest anyone's gotten, yeah. Wow. It looks like you got the second part, which is what no one can get. I think they could have safely set this for $1,000 and <laughs> still been okay. Yeah. yeah. So this was the first collab that I did with Tom and Juji, and this is also when my channel really exploded after this uh, collab. So this is when I decided to uh, check out a different beta, trying to bicycle. But I don't know why I tried to explain it in such difficult climbing language. Come into this just to get my bicycle up. I'm gonna bicycle this. Time. Thankfully, your audience knows what you're talking about because I have not a goddamn clue. <laughs> I'm filming him, bro. Back off. Back off. Of course, no one knew what a bicycle was, but that didn't work. So I went back to the first method. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah, oh, you've got this. Finish it. This is you. Yeah. There he is! Yeah. Yeah. Woo. 800 kroners! So this was graded V11 and uh, in my opinion it was definitely V11. And I'm even gonna show you guys some of the my earlier sends that I've just shot with like a cell phone camera. Hopefully that is okay enough. So the next one is one from way back. This was just after the last World Cup that I ever did. The first World Cup in Norway, and it would also be my last World Cup. Uh, so the day after I went out to try this bowler with just a group of friends, this is called a Dynamite, it's 8B. This was in September 2015. So the guy filming started to film a little bit late and cut out the first move here. And I don't really know when I would say I was in the best shape of my life, but I was definitely feeling pretty strong here. And this took me only about half an hour to complete. I think I had a couple of failed attempts before sending it. And again, I'm sorry for the for the quality, but this was just shot with the phone. And I think it's nice to include some of those as well. So I don't know, if you guys like this kind of format, I was thinking about doing a video where I show you all the bowlers that I haven't completed. I think it would be kind of cool to make a video of all the bowlers that I've failed. And I also want to make a compilation of all the slaps of the week. That should be around like at least 30 to 50 bowler prompts. I think it would be nice to try to collect all those and uh, go through them one by one. Maybe arrange them from easiest to hardest. From San Francisco with uh, Anton, this is the time that the uh, audio didn't work, so I just made a voiceover of the whole video. This is probably the gym with the hardest problems I've ever been to. I failed on a lot of the hardest climbs. This one, however, was more my style. Okay, so here is one from way, way, way back. This bowler is called All In, All Out. It was a project. So this was supposed to be part of a documentary that never happened. So back in 2010, I got a call from a team that wanted to make a documentary about me. Unfortunately, the documentary never happened. So that's why I'm showing you this now. This bowler is called All In, All Out, and uh, it's a first ascent. Probably the coolest bowler I've ever done. You have to do this crazy all-out dyno and it all comes down to the thumb. You need to hit that thumb precisely to catch the swing. And even if you control the swing going out, you still have to hold the swing going back in.
And this next one you might have seen. This is from Tokyo, the worst rated climbing gym that we went to that happened to be the best climbing gym. So after completing some of the, the taped up boulders, the local guys showed me some of their projects. And I definitely think these are among the hardest boulders that I've ever filmed. And it makes it especially hard when you don't really know where to go. You just have a little red dot, the laser pointer, pointing at the next hold. It's hard to plan the bowler that way. So this first one was probably like 7C plus or something. Tokyo style, the wall is just packed with holds. So after that, the guys showed me an even harder ball problem. And this was a project. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is hard. Yes. Very hard, okay. <laughs> yeah. Very hard. And this was definitely one of the most memorable climbing sessions of my life. <laughs> the climbing gym went from a rating of like two point something to now have 4.9. This next one is one from my earlier vlogs. I went on a road trip to, uh, to climb around Stavanger. They have a lot of good bouldering. This one is uh, Millennium's Falcon 8A. Just a really crimpy, straightforward bowler. He previously only had one ascent, and this was my flash go. And I remember I had so much fun filming these vlogs. Just trying a bunch of different bowlers. That's usually what I prefer. I don't like to be caught up on like one project, but coming to a new place and just bowler a lot, I think that's what I think is the most fun. Just to do relatively easy bowler problems like first try, second try, third try, but not spend too much time on them. I think this was the second ascent of this bullet problem. Such a beautiful place. Okay, so this next one, I mean, the, the film is pretty terrible from here. This was a solo vlog, so I filmed everything myself. I had to put out the, the cell phone camera on the other, from the other angle, just to cover both sides. This is Jack the Ripper. It's 8A+, and uh, it's definitely one of the harder 8A pluses I've tried. It has this really big move, low down. And the holes are really, really sharp. And after that, you have to do a bunch of low percentage moves to get to the lip. I tried this bullet problem several times in my vlogs before I finally completed it. So this is probably one of the harder bullet problems uh, that I've done in uh, the gym in Oslo. This orange 8A. Really tricky trying to catch that toe hook.
Here's another 8 day from Oslo. Uh, this black one, pretty straightforward. I think this was part of my... Uh, I tried to complete all the bowlers in the gym. Uh, it was a long time ago, I did this video with my brother. And I tried to use the zoom effect. This was uh, back when I used uh, the little Canon camera that I used for probably a year. It was not as uh, good, so I don't know, when zooming into the footage, it kind of looks crappy. But I tried to show you guys how tiny that hole was. Here's a 7C Plus from uh, a more recent videos. This was the 100 bowlers that I did. A video to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. And this was the last problem I did in that video. At the time, the hardest bowler in the gym was 7C Plus. Okay, let's jump back to uh, North Carolina. This is with Isaac. He has, uh, over the years, he showed me a lot of different bowlers. I've tried to flash a few of them. This pink one, uh, pretty straightforward, 7C plus, just pulling down. And this was when I did all the training for Ninja Warrior. So I made a lot of different Ninja Warrior videos and I couldn't tell anyone that I was actually gonna compete for Team Europe on Ninja Warrior. So I just made a bunch of Ninja Warrior videos and I tried to film a little bit of climbing in between, but I couldn't tell you why I was doing all the Ninja Warrior stuff. This was my first attempt, my flash go. This was such a fun trip. I was just driving around and sleeping in my tent. And uh, I remember uh, Tore, one of my friends, he lent me his uh, cabin and I stayed there for a while and just went outside, just climbed, filmed a bunch. And I definitely hope to come back here because there's still a lot of bowlers that I haven't tried. And I haven't flashed that many eight days. So I'm glad I got this on tape. So this is in Atlanta in the US and uh, this was after doing uh, the arm wrestling and uh, honestly my arms have never felt more sore. I felt like I couldn't pull at all that day. So even though these are not the hardest grade wise, they're uh, up to 70 plus, they felt incredibly hard on that day. And uh, while editing this video I had to cut out so much complaining because after falling off every time I mentioned how much my arms hurt and uh, it was just getting ridiculous. So. I'm in deep pain right now. You know what? I'm never gonna arm wrestle again, honestly. <laughs> and the pain in my arms lasted for uh, I think almost a month. So uh, that's definitely gonna be the last time I arm wrestle. But that's the problem when I do stuff like that. I always try so hard. I remember Tom and Juji told me to, to go easy and not try too hard, but it's impossible for me to uh, try to go easy. But I feel like the key when you're tired like this is to uh, warm up properly is coming from me. That, that this is like, when my arms feel this tired, you need the warming up just for, for the arms to feel a little bit better.
After a lot of warming up and just climbing, I could complete this black bowler. So we're gonna stay in the US. This is from the video uh, where I tried the best rated uh, climbing gym in New York with uh, Oswaldo, shout out to him. Uh, if you haven't already, you should check his uh, channel out. And that day we had already made a video uh, in another gym, so we were both feeling pretty sore. But that's usually how I like it. When I shoot my videos, I like to shoot just a bunch of videos in a short amount of time as possible. And then I have a lot of videos saved up that I can spend uh, time editing when I get back home. Because the editing process, that's really what takes a long time. I spend between 30 and 40 hours on average on every video that I upload. So that's just on the editing alone. And then of course there's a lot of planning and the actual filming and all the other stuff. And this gym really reminded me of the gym in Japan. Just this was the best rated and the one in Japan was the worst rated. This had a really friendly atmosphere. Uh, there were dogs inside and it had a bunch of hard problems. This one uh, again pinches my, my specialty. Uh, this one was uh, V. 10, I believe. Come on, nice. There's like such a big difference between the V10s and uh, V11s in here. Yeah. Eco Terra is V10 70 plus. This bowler meant a lot to me and that's because I'd seen it in Rampage, one of my favorite videos, climbing videos growing up. This was like one of the go-to videos when I needed some extra motivation. Chris Sharma tried this bowler and it looked really cool. It kind of looked like almost like a font style bowler. So by font style, I mean a bowler that looks like it was in Fontainebleau a famous bouldering spot in France, just outside Paris. Ooh. Are you sure that it's V10? Wow. <laughs> you just flashed it. Like that. So being able to flash this one was pretty cool and very unexpected because uh, I had failed on a lot of easier problems that day. I don't know, usually I feel like when you get to the end of the day and you're tired, your body is kind of like in fight mode. And uh, I always feel stronger in the evenings than in the mornings. That was awesome actually. We had Matthew filming from the top that day. I reached out to you guys and asked if uh, someone uh, was in the area and wanted to help out. And Matthew sent me a text and said that he would be down to, sh to show me around. And he also had a camera. So, so he got a second angle from the top. Okay, so this one is also really, really old. This is probably from 2010 or something. It's one of the first 8Bs, or not the first, but probably like the third or fourth 8B I'd done. This was the first ascent, and I did not name it Antonio Vivaldi, uh, but uh, the guys who showed me this bowler, they asked me if I could name it that because I think Antonio Vivaldi was the guy who found it or something. And uh, since I just showed up and did the bowler without having cleaned it or found it, I felt like I should follow uh, their advice and call it, uh, call it what they wanted the bowler to be named. So it's usually like the, the guy who does it first, the guy who does the first ascent, he gets to name the bowlers. But I think in, especially in cases like this, where I did the bowler first, but I wasn't the one who found it and I wasn't the one who cleaned it, then I think it's just fair that the guys who have found it and spend a lot of time cleaning it get to decide what it should be called. All right, we're moving on. Um, hopefully this is interesting. I mean, this is a very different video from what I'm used to making. 
but because of all the corona and stuff, I figured this was a good time to try to collect as many hard problems as possible into one video. So we're back at Oslo Klatter Center. I'm uh, skipping back and forth and uh, I've definitely saved some of the best bowlers for last. This is just one of the bowlers that I've showed in a recent video, 7C+. Uh, I definitely think it's one of the hardest 7C pluses I've done inside. Very long bowler, more like a mini root or something. And this move throwing your heel hook out, it was definitely the crux. And another hard 7C plus is this pink um, slopey uh, 7C plus. This felt so hard the first time I tried it. I had no chance at even doing that last move separately. And for some reason it just felt so much better in this video. And on those holes, I think it could have been because of the friction. If, the, if my skin was a little bit better and the friction was better, then that probably helped a lot. If you just keep trying a bowler, I mean, even if it feels impossible, you just try it, try it, try it. You rest a day and then you come back, try the same bowler. It always feels so much better. So this black one you've seen pretty recently and this took me, I think out of all the indoor problems, this was one of the problems that took me the longest. It was this move right here that I couldn't figure out. You had to shuffle your feet around, put your left foot up really high, and that's a pretty bad foothold. And I remember I hit my knee so many times from popping from that foothold. And then I eventually did it on just a training session. Uh, I asked uh, my girlfriend to film me and I sent it just uh, on a normal day in the gym. But I showed you this pretty recently, so I think we're just gonna move on to the next one. So this is at Stone Summit in Atlanta, another really, really good climbing gym. But my arms were still really, really sore from the arm wrestling. I've never felt weaker than I did on this trip. Uh, and I complained so much in my videos. As I already told you, I cut away most of the complaining, but I still think there's a lot of complaining in the videos. So a lot of these problems felt just pretty straightforward. I feel like a lot of the gyms in the US have more powerful prompts, whereas the European gyms have more technical prompts. And uh, this powerful style really suits me better. So as you can see, all these problems don't really have any tricks to them, it's just pulling. Uh, it's almost like on a training board. All right, so back to Oslo again. This one was 8A, big slopey holds, a really fun climb. Uh, another one of those really long climbs though. And uh, the reason I put some of these uh, easier graded problems on the list is just because they felt pretty hard. And as I've said before, the grades are not very accurate in any climbing gym. So I think it's better that I show you guys some of the problems that I think are the hardest. Here is another uh, 8B. I don't know, this is probably like five years ago or something. It's called uh, Bonne Romantique. It means uh, farmer romance or something. Uh, this is a reconstruction, it's not uh, footage from the original send, so you see it's chopped up and I used my, uh, it was probably like an iPhone 5 or something uh, on a tripod and I, uh, I wanted to get the bowler, but uh, there are a lot of different angles and it doesn't really make sense, the different angles, and uh, obviously the quality is pretty shitty, but 
Even back then, this was before I started YouTube, and uh, I tried to film as much of my climbing as possible. A lot of people say that if you have climbed something and you don't have either witnesses or a video without any cuts, so like a one take video, you don't really have proof of doing that polar. And uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know if I agree or not. Uh, I do think that some people are cheating and lying about doing stuff they haven't done. I mean, it's pretty easy nowadays to just put up a phone. Unfortunately though, on a long bowler like this, you, I mean, you could put down a phone, but that would only be to get evidence because if you put the phone from far away, you wouldn't be able to see any of the moves. So on this bowler, I mean, I had a lot of witnesses watching me climb this, so I didn't really, I mean, this video was not to have proof of climbing it. This was just to have an entertaining video to, uh, to upload to, I think it was Facebook at the time I uploaded this video. But a really cool bowler, a very dynamic. You have to throw your feet around, you do a bunch of 360s. And the crux move is at the very end. You see it here. Uh, it doesn't look so bad, but that's because I didn't start from the ground when I actually tried this. All right, so back to New York. This was uh, at uh, Brooklyn Bowlers. It was a V10. I think it was the hardest rated uh, bowler at the gym when we were there. It had some tiny crimps and again, very physical. And uh, as I've said, I think a lot of the problems in the US that I have tried are more physical than the bowlers in Europe. More physical, less technical. So this was uh, filmed with uh, Osvaldo. Osvaldo has a great channel for tutorials and uh, climbing outside he does a lot of fun stuff so you should definitely check him out if you uh, if you haven't already nice come on nice come on yes nice Oh, that's brutal, that Damn. left hand. So while I just play some uh, bouldering in the background, I also wanted to ask you what you want to see for my million subscriber uh, video. I mean, I know we're pretty far from a million, but I just want to make sure that the, the million subscriber video is a really good video that you guys can look forward to. So if you have any suggestions on what you would like me to make, please leave a comment down below. Uh, I really want to go all out for this video and make something that you guys want to see. So this orange one was, I don't know, I feel like when I eventually sent it, it was more just lucky. This is also in uh, North Carolina, Charlotte, at Inner Peaks. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in North Carolina uh, because of the collapse I've done with uh, Tom and Juji. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to travel that much this year, but hopefully when this COVID thing goes away, uh, we can start traveling again. and. And uh, for sure, it's, it's hard to stay creative with all these uh, travel restrictions and just restrictions in general. So this is the hardest problem I've ever done. 
it's called Blood Redemption, and I originally graded it 8C. So this was my project for probably a year. I had done the uh, upper part, that was a uh, 8A plus called Yadahenya, and uh, I decided to try the, the sit start, and uh, that adds like an 8A plus into the 8A plus. So you have to do basically two 8A pluses, V12s in a row. And as with the most hard problems, this felt completely impossible the first time I tried it. Look, <laughs> I really look like a baby face here. Um, so this was, uh, I think it was in 2010. And it was just after completing Ollie Hulk's extension, the 9B in uh, Roddy R. So I felt like I was in the best shape of my life. I had tried this previously without being able to even do this move, this first move that you see here. But after spending so much time in Roddy R, I felt like I was in the best shape of my life. And this was the first time I got through that bottom part. And a fun fact about this area, this is actually where it rains the most in all of Norway. And maybe even one of the places in the world where it rains the most. So you don't really have many good days to try it. But this was uh, one of the few times where it was completely dry. And that also put a little bit of extra pressure on myself. But as I've mentioned before, usually when you get past through something you didn't think you would get through, you mess up the top. And that's exactly what happened here. I thought I'd never be able to complete that beginning again. And I got so stressed in my head that I completely messed up the sequence. I remember I had like only 30 minutes before I had to uh, get on a flight back to Oslo. This is just outside Bergen. And that put a little bit of extra pressure on myself. And this was also part of what was supposed to be a documentary about me. But due to financial reasons, it never happened. Det är så mycket bra, det finns problem och sånt här, så det är farligt, men... Gå där. Vi måste gå om en sån tio minuter, vi. Det är cirka så lång tid det tar att gå där. Jag vet inte varför min röst också låter så annorlunda i den här klippen. So this long move coming up here is the crux of the last 8 day plus part. And it's nice here because you get a pretty good rest and that's also why I brought my chalk bag. This was before uh, the wrong knee chalk bag. This chalk bag looks uh, really shitty, to be honest. And I told myself it's, uh, it's now or never. I was bleeding from all my fingers and 
I knew that this was going to be my last attempt and if I didn't do it now, I would have to come back next year. It also has a pretty hard ending. It's like a 7A plus bowler, but that feels pretty hard when you've done that whole beginning. So that was the hardest problem I've ever done. And uh, I remember it was probably a year or two later, there was this local competition uh, in Voss, not far from here and uh, randomly Adam Andra showed up and uh, competed at this very local climbing competition. And uh, I mean, it was probably a lot of luck involved, but I ended up beating him in that bouldering competition. And the next day he went and tried this bowler. Uh, it didn't take him that long to complete this and he downgraded it from 8C to 8B+. So now it's 8B+, but I suggested 8C. But that's how it goes. And uh, this bowler has not been repeated since as far as I know. It's only Adamandra and I who've done this bowler. And this was in 2010, so a pretty long time ago. So that was the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a little bit different. You've probably seen some of these bowlers before, but uh, I think it adds something with the commentary and I don't know, I think it was just nice to make a collection of all the hardest problems, especially now when filming new climbing content is really hard. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you're not already and uh, turn on those post notifications. That's the little bell down on the right side. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.